I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We're still enjoying our time here in St. George, and we've, uh, we're going to be blessed to hear from David Conklin, and then next time, his dear wife, Sarah. But David, thank you come, for coming and sharing your story. Thank you. I relate so much to the things we're going to hear. I'm just so excited <laughs> to, to hear. Where were you born? Uh, California. Were you? What so, city? Uh, my dad was in the military, so yeah. Fort Ord. Oh, down there, yeah. I uh, didn't spend much time there, unfortunately, but uh, yeah. we moved up to Sacramento, so that's kind of where my... That's where you grew up. Yeah, and, that's right. And yep. were they LDS, your family? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, so second generation. Um, I'm a second generation. My yeah. uh, dad and, and my grandfather kind of joined. My, my grandfather had a friend at work that shared a book with him, and it wasn't the Book of Mormon, but it was another one. They kind of talked back and forth, and they... Uh, joined the church and my mom had in high school she was part of a, a madrigal singing group and they did a little tour to Salt Lake and and uh, she tells a story about standing in front of the Christus and just really feeling yeah. the spirit and learning about it and uh, so she wanted to join and my grandpa said not unless we learn about it first and they all joined together so wow so that we're must have a, been quite the experience yeah huh? so you were very your family is very into the church then, and you were raised, and how many brothers and sisters do you have? And so I'm second of six. So oh, I have okay. one older brother and one younger brother okay. and then three younger sisters. And uh, I, you were baptized, I guess, at age eight and yep. went through the whole That's business right. primary and young man and all that stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, we were very, um, I mean, I, I think we would have, I mean, we were a family, you know, we had Whatever regular uh, you normal know kid, family kid stuff, yeah, yeah normal family <laughs> stuff but we you know the LDS our LDS experience church was very important to us you know we yeah. um, and and even more than that family I think was just right. something really central to us it was a um, um, it was something that I felt growing up was very important sure. um, we'd had a couple moves and uh, you know I, I remember and I've even tried to instill this in my kids now that. You know, when you move, you're not going to have your friends. I mean, your friends are your siblings, and so, right. and we're all still really close now. Um, oh, that's but, right. um, but it really was something very important to my mom and well, my dad. And they were married in the temple, They too, were, yeah. they were all sealed, and they were all born in the covenant. Born in the covenant, all of us, okay. yep. Yeah. All right, so you and probably take seminary and all that stuff in high school. Did yeah, you, you know, I wasn't, I, I did take seminary. I didn't, uh, I... I didn't do all four years. Mm. I uh, I was involved in sports and other things, but so I don't yeah. think I did my senior year. But I I did I did go. I wasn't huge on seminary. Yeah, really. No, not not yeah. not so much. But, but no question that the church was true, right? I uh, no, not at all. Yeah. No, um, I had lots of spiritual experiences um, as a child, answers to prayers. Um, I I kind of I've I've, I've said before that you know. I was grateful to have, you know, broken cars, you know, like cars that didn't work. Uh, that's where I think my mom taught us how to pray, you know, dad would get out and oh. up would go the hood and we'd all fold our arms and pray, you know, help dad fix the car, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really was, my faith was very simple as a child. As I, I really did believe that God heard my prayers yeah. and, um, and, and answered them. And those are faith promoting in the sense. Did you ever relate that to, okay, the church is true. So because of these, then the church is true? You know, I don't know that it was. I, I don't know that I ever really questioned whether the church was true or not. I mean, oh. when I was younger. Yeah. When I got older, I did. I, I remember I, it wasn't a question. I just wanted to have a confirmation right. that it was true. Um, but you know, we really didn't focus on. Um, th there was no hyper focus on knowing if the church was true or not. It just was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. I guess. I guess it was just kind of an uh, of an assumption as a it's family. Just, it was something that you know that we understood. Yeah. And um, 
you know, we'd, we'd do family home evenings, but they weren't really family home evenings. I mean, we kind of, they really kind of uh, turned into just gospel conversations. Really? Okay. Yeah. And we would ask my dad all sorts of questions. And um, I can remember really talking about some things that were kind of what I would consider kind of deep doctrines. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember feeling this sense of pride kind of knowing these things outside yeah. what I would now consider just the core basic simple gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, right. I, I was learning all these things that were outside of that and we would, I mean, it was not uncommon for them to go two or three hours of just wow. the older kids around dad, you know, fielding questions. Now, it was did great. Did you say he was a bishop? Did he did, he yeah, was? he served as a bishop. Okay. It, was actually, it was after I had left, but he had always been in bishoprics okay. and uh, okay. both of them very, very faithful parents. Um, he works in the temple now, and wow. uh, okay, yeah. so still very active. Very active. And you uh, end up going on a mission after yep. high school. I did. Where'd you go on yeah. your mission? Rapid City, South Dakota. Yeah. Yep. And, so uh, how was that? You know, it was a amazing experience. Yeah. Um, it was really. Um, I, I liked. I, you know, I had an older brother that went to a foreign country, mm -hmm. and a younger brother that went to a foreign country, and I was in the U.S. and I think when I got the call, I was trying to be a little bit brave. <laughs> I was being excited about it because, you know, I, I thought, you know, I wanted Something to go. Good. Yeah. But, um, you know, it was great. I remember my, my, my brother, he told me, it, the one piece of advice he gave me when, when I left, he said, um, just follow the rules. He said, just follow the rules. If it says being at this time, being up at this time, up at that time. If it said what just, he said, just that, follow the rules and that. the Lord will bless you. Yeah. And I really took that to heart, and I did. I mean, I did. I think I, I know I annoyed a lot of elders, and if any of them are okay. watching this, you know, I, I forgive me. Yeah, yeah. No, no ill intent. Uh, in meant. I know this is a leading question, but yeah. did you sense that you were preaching Jesus, or were you preaching the church? Um, that's a really good question. I, I believe that I was. I wanted people to know about Jesus, but did you? I did, but I, I didn't know Jesus without the church, I, if that's an okay way to say yeah. it. So really it, for you me it was... Jesus beyond Joseph Smith's vision. That's right. That kind of stuff. So really the church was, to the extent that Jesus was a vehicle to get to God, the church was a vehicle to get to Jesus. And so I, I wanted people to know about him, but in order for that to happen, they had to know about the restoration. They had to know about sure. covenants and the ordinances and <laughs> right, priesthood and all, yeah. all, the, all those things. So it was important, in my mind, it was important they know about that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you come home and, and actually Sarah's waited for you. Is that true? Yeah, we knew each other. Um, so I had just graduated. It was her senior year and I went to a young single adult dance and saw her there. The, the, Crazy thing is, we had all the same friends, but we had never seen each other prior to that one night after and a again, dance. And again, let me back up. Where was this at? <laughs> it was in Portland, Oregon. This was in Portland. Yes, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And so, uh, so yeah, we started dating. Um, she actually filled out my mission papers for me, typed oh. them, <laughs> typed them for me, um, and uh, yeah, and we wrote. We wrote for two years, and she was she went to uh, Rick's, and okay. I I told her I I really encouraged her to date. Yeah. And uh, she really took that to heart. She <laughs> dated a lot, but I, I just well, knew she, that <laughs> she wanted to follow you. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, I, I just, I just, uh, I, I, I knew that uh, if it was going to work out, it was going to work out. And she needed uh, to be sure and stuff. Yeah. And it so you come out. home, you get married. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yep. and then what happens? Yeah, married in the Portland Temple, and oh. um, we, you know, we were young. I mean, it was really short after I got back. You know, that we got engaged and. Uh, Went to school and um, where'd you go to yeah, school? At uh, Lewis and Clark, um, Lewis and Clark, up in Portland, Oregon. Okay. And uh, and after you graduated, you went on to yeah, went it went to law school. Law school. And yeah, we went out to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and at, there at Creighton. And we were, you know, we we loved it. We loved the the ward we were in there in uh, Portland. We had family close by, but we were far enough away that it felt like our own kind of. Yeah. you know, life. And, uh, and then there in Omaha, that was really an amazing experience of being a family on our own, really, you know, yeah. for the first time. And we actually did have a pit stop in Salt Lake uh, before we went to law school. But, you yeah. know, we, we, okay. both those experiences, we had the opportunity to really grow together as a family and we served. And I was Elders Quorum president during oh, okay. uh, law school. Um, 
and we were restoring an old house, and so we we didn't have much time uh, to yeah, do anything and, other and than do law school. And yeah, everything exactly. Else, so. But it was great times. Um, There's no question that that you were on the right path, headed to the no, celestial kingdom, and no. working working your way to, to heaven. Right? No, I mean I really felt blessed. Sure. And I was, yeah. but I, I there uh, there really was a feeling in me that I had merited those things. Well, you're earning you it. Know? Well, yeah. the Lord's bound when we do what we say, yeah. and when we don't do what He says, He has no promise. Yeah. Right? Or some yeah. uh, paraphrase of that scripture. And, and you know, it's and it's uncomfortable uncomfortable now for me to think in those terms. But that really was oh, um, kind true. of the base the the base under you know of my understanding of God. It really Everything. was. I knew he loved me, but I always felt like I was chasing his love. Like if I could just be more diligent, if I could just, you know, um, be less less lustful, if I could if I could be more sincere, if I could if I could if I could if I could, and so I always felt like, um, you know, that I was constantly reaching after almost this unattainable. I knew it was there, yeah. But um, I can remember I can remember at times when I would. Sin or something. I, 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 and it sounds silly, but I would, I could envision that God would be up there, watching me, <laughs> and going, don't, just don't, don't do don't it. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. oh, he did it again and turn his back on me. This is the, yeah. this is the way I. I'm going to push him down the ladder again. Yeah. I really did, and I felt like you know I had to, um, really make up for it by you know praying extra and fasting and and really so God would hear me again and turn back to me and look at me again. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 one of the things and one put of the him in your debt, yeah, right. That that's was right. one thing that got me. Uh, okay, he's going to owe me, yeah, owe me big time here for yeah. For doing and that. and I didn't I didn't ever, I never felt like um, that I that I wanted to have one over on God, but I really felt like in order to get a blessing, I needed to. I mean, my parents were faithful faithful tithing pairs. I, I was as well, yeah, because I didn't want to lose my job. Oh yeah, you know I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop that flow of blessings. I would accept every calling because I didn't want to. You know I had I had these pressures where I knew God had called me to had some great work for me. You know my patriarchal blessing, other th experiences I had in my Promises life. Promises that we had. Yeah. yeah, told me that there was something that God had for me, and I didn't want to screw that up. And so. I mean, and so to think about that now, I mean, it really was me. It was a, it was a coercion. It was it was me trying to manipulate God to make sure I was in His good favor and that I didn't frustrate that. That I I could I didn't want to disappoint Him. Sure. It was it was I was completely screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> so so you go on and get out out of yes. law school. Do you practice there or do you come back to Salt? Where, where do you go after law school? Plus yeah, we, we got a job uh, in Salt Lake City. I started working at a firm there, a small firm, uh, and was eventually a, um, joined into a larger firm. And yeah, so you're living in Salt Lake. Yep. And by now, you've got several children. Did you have? Yeah, we went to law school with two, came back with four, and then we had four again. So uh, family you know, of, with eight children. That's right. Yep, with eight. And so. I'll bet you were a blessing to any ward you walked into. I bet the <laughs> bishop just, oh man, youth and and yeah. leadership, and your yeah. wife was. Primary president. We'll hear about her story, but she's primary president a couple of times and all yeah. that stuff. So, you know, just the ideal Mormon family. Yeah, we were happy to serve. We were happy to be there, yeah. and um, it, it just we didn't understand there being any other. Yeah, there wasn't no other possibility. You don't say no to a calling. You, right. you don't. You so know. what happens? Yeah. So um, I was serving in the young men's and um, with the priest. Loved them. Had a great time. Um, and um, actually, prior to that, when I was practicing law, I, I had met this this one of my clients, this Christian couple um, that I just really have. They've become some of my dearest friends. I, I really love them. But in getting to know them, I had this kind of um, breaking point in my mind where I I knew how much they loved Jesus. I knew everything they had given in their life for Him. They had expressed that to you? Yes. Well, I could see it in their life. I, 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 just in our conversations. You just knew. He, he'd answer the phone. He'd say, praise the Lord. And we, every time I'd pick up the phone, he'd say, praise the Lord. That's how he answered. He wasn't a, hi, this is, you know, so he would you, just say, you knew he I had, knew it was important to them. And, and I had, had conversations Jesus. with them. And, uh, and I had this struggle where I knew how sinful I was in my heart. Yeah. And I, it, and, it, and I struggled with understanding how it was 
that I was going to get all the way to the highest degree of the celestial kingdom because of covenants that I had made, which, you know, I, I wasn't great at keeping, you know, I'm sinful, sure. but I was going to make it, but they weren't because they didn't have a priesthood baptism, priesthood ordinances and covenants. Oh, boy. And it really, it really, really impacted yeah, you. Yeah, it really did. And so I went, I, I, I did the study, I, you know, I, I, I was really making sure that really for sure you had to have that priesthood blessing to get in the celestial kingdom. Uh, the the baptism. baptism. That's right. To get in That's the right. Rest. To get in the social kingdom. And I, so I, you know, I, I read the various sections of the Doctrine and Covenants. I talked to my dad and I said, Dad, is this, is this accurate? And he said, yeah, it is. And, uh, and I struggled with it. And I guess I, that was the first point at which I just decided, I kind of broke with the party. I decided. Allowed yourself to just that little crack. To say, you know what? I guess I just can't imagine that God's that small. And I kind of, use some gymnastics in my mind, I kind of said, well, you know, if it is really that important, then it'll just be, you know, a hand wave or it'll be some, maybe that's why we have the temples for that situation the or something, something like yeah. that. I yeah. thought if it's really that important, then it's, it's going to be pretty simple. Yeah. But that mindset stuck with me and really affected myself for the next year and a half or so. And then one of my young men was involved in a sport and I, he, he kind of had an affinity. We kind of had, you know, he trusted me, and I, I was really looking for a way where I could reach out to him more. And so he was involved in a sport, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to just get involved in this sport. And so I talked to the instructor, and he said, yeah, sure. And so I'd met this instructor and started, you know, getting to know him. And, and we were training for this competition, and we decided as a group we were going to read the New Testament. We just thought, hey, let's just, That's interesting. Let's just do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's read the New just Testament. Just for the heck of it, huh? Yeah, just kind of as a team thing. And... And at that point there, I had been introduced to Ravi Zacharias, and I had um, listened to the Michael Wilder testimony, you know, mm. and I thought, wow, that's really, you know, I, I thought it was amazing that this guy has this faith-promoting experience. And, of course, you know, I thought he was wrong because he had left the LDS church, but, <laughs> but I had this new understanding about faith in God, you know. And, uh, and so when we got to read the New Testament, I really wanted to have that childlike experience. I wanted to have... A reading of it that where I didn't context, I didn't put any kind of Mormon filter on it. I didn't want to think, what did Bruce R. McConkie say about this, or what did Tom? I had done a lot of reading, and even just being brought up all these doctrines, yeah. and I, I, I had always read, and if something rubbed wrong, in my mind, the Bible lost. It always did. It, oh, it was always it, second it, place. It, yeah, that's right, for sure. And so that whole thing about, as far as it's translated correctly, that really was something I relied on to make sense of the Bible where it didn't make sense. And so I didn't want that. And I really prayed to God really, really fervently. I just said, I want to have this. I, I, want, to, I want to have this understanding the way that you had it. And I understood grace for the first time. I read it and I understand I had this. I, had, I started in, in, in the book of John and went to uh, Romans and Galatians. And, and oh, I just, I understood grace for the first time ever. And it was incredible. It was amazing. And um, now you'd probably read the book of the Bible before. I had you? the New Testament. Yes. Were you seeing things you'd never seen? Oh, before? for sure. Yeah. The filter was off. It a was off. Bit, huh? It was completely off. Yeah. And uh, and I really remember reading. I'm like, I don't remember this at all. I mean, I it was know. it seemed so clear. And um, and you know, and I had actually read in a, I, I had read before in the King James, and I wanted to read in a different version, and I was really skeptical. I really would. I'd read a verse. I'd read a verse. I would compare be between. James, yeah. I would. I would compare, and I, I settled on the ESV only because I liked how it had the footnotes, and I always found that the words were in the King James where there was any kind of question. So I felt safe with the ESV. But, but I just read it with a clarity that God really did open my eyes, and I understood grace for the first time. And I thought, you know what? This is incredible. Restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to find grace in there. I mean, I'm going to find it. Yeah. And that was really what my motivation was. And so as I started looking for it, um, you know, I don't know how much time we have left, but... Uh, go ahead, but start, go into that, uh, the 2014 thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, as I, as I started, you know, reading and I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to basically prove that the restored gospel of Jesus Christ taught grace. Encompassed grace. Exactly, because I had read, you know, in Second, second Nephi, um, you know, where it's in, in a t verses, uh, what is it, 25, 23, where right. it says, you know, we're saved by grace. After all we, yeah, after all we can do. And, and, uh, and I, 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 I remember when Elder uh, 
President Uchtdorf gave his talk on grace, which would have been, I, I believe. I in, think that's the 2014. Yeah, that's right. In the 2014, yeah. yeah so, and, I, and I'd already understood it. And I was in the back room and Sarah was in the front and I was watching on the TV and he, and he talked about grace and, and he talked about, you know, after all, what can we do? And I remember yelling. I, I remember going, ah, Sarah, did you hear that? Did you hear it? And I ran out to her and I said, He's teach I mean, grace was, it was such a new concept and such a life-giving concept for me that I was just excited about it. And I was actively trying to find that in the, in the, in the, restored, yeah, in the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. And so um, anyways, that process for me was really, I, I started, I said, I'm, I'm going to find it. I started looking at quotes and real quick, I, I found quotes that were contradictory, you know, that talked only about grace and only about works. And, and I said, okay, well, I, I've got to kind of narrow this in. What is considered the doctrine you know, I knew it was the standard works. I said, if it's not in the standard works, it can be an opinion, it can be dismissed. I said, I'm not going to pay attention to the quotes. Right. And I started looking at the, the standard works, and I started finding contradictions. And in scratching the surface of those contradictions and looking, I said, well, you know, when this revelation came out, what was going on at that time? Who was involved? And what I started... Was the inspiration? That's exactly all, yeah. right. And I started looking at those things, and it started creating more and more questions. I knew, you know, I thought I knew about church history. I would have said that I did, sure. but I didn't, I don't think I really understood, um, yeah. understood it. But once I started, things started unraveling, unraveling, and unraveling, and I had to say, okay, restoration at first was, you know, t t temples and ordinances and all these things, and then I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's just, you know, just the Book of Mormon and the truth there. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's just, just, just. And finally I said, well, it's just got to be the priesthood. I mean, that's, that's really what it had to be just the priesthood, you know, I mean, let alone that there were, you know, the three Nephites, you know, three apostles John there, the and John the Baptist, we had four apostles walking the earth, they had the or priesthood. John, not John the Baptist, or John. Yeah, John the Revelator. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, he needed Joseph to bring the priesthood. And, um, you know, when I, and then when I read the book of Hebrews, that was really kind of that, that last moment where I realized that, that when Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, when he said, when he, his works of salvation, his, you know, the, the works of the salvation on the cross, that that, when, that, that really was it. And, I, and I, I likened it to, you know, this, I felt like I was in this free fall. I was falling down this, this, this steep cliff and I was just trying to grab onto anything I could. Just to prove the church. To save faith. my faith. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't hate the church. Mm -hmm. I loved it. To you know, and, um, I, you know, I use the analogy, you know, that, um, you know, God knocked Paul off his horse, you know, <laughs> right. opened his eyes. And, um, and I, I really never, I, mean, I loved my horse. I, I, I loved it. I loved sitting <laughs> on my horse and I never wanted to be knocked off of it ever. Yeah. And, uh, but, but God in his grace and his love, he did. And he opened my eyes and showed me something that I had no idea was there. And it was hard. It was the most enlightening, freeing, but at the same time, terrifying and hurtful, you know, to, to, to realize um, that all these things that I had set my foundation on, that they, 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 weren't, they weren't true. They, uh -huh. they, didn't, they didn't mean anything. And, um, but when I got to the bottom of that pit, praise God that Jesus was there. And that is what I had. And I had that. Um, I know a lot of people don't have that and they fall into atheism or whatever it is. And I don't know all of their reasons why, but for whatever reason, I'm just grateful that I had that was that kind foundation. of a born again moment? Or did you feel like you had a specific born again moment? Or? You know, I think that, you know, I've heard people's experiences about being born again yeah. in different ways. I think for me, when I knew I was born again, as I just was consumed with grace, I was consumed with the idea. I wanted to know as much as I possibly could. I felt alive. I felt renewed. Um, I, I had this feeling where, um, and this, and this just mindset that, um, that I was a new creature. Yeah. And, um, and worshiping this Jesus that had, had been willing to come down and do that work and, and take on, oh yeah. pay for our sins. Like oh, that. I remember real quick, a real quick, uh, I remember driving in the car and hearing, um, you know, the, um, away in the manger and having this, ex where I realized that that baby, I mean, that that was God in the flesh. God I mean, flesh. I had never, I had always thought of my older brother, you know, I was kind of into to realize, it, just everything had a newness to it. 
yes. that I had never seen yeah. or appreciated before. Right. And, um, and it was just, it was mind blowing. It was, it was incredible. Did you get to share any of this with family? Not Sarah, we'll hear, hear her yeah. flesh out your part of that with her, but yeah. your, your, your dad and family? I did, you know, and honestly, I did everything wrong. <laughs> I did, I, I, um, I we had do, him. Don't we don't, we just, we just <clears throat> don't filter right there. I, I don't know, maybe it's in God's hands. Don't you trust that? Oh, for sure I anyway, do. So what happened? I'm for sorry. sure I do. Well, I mean, I, I had read Grant Palmer's book, um, you know, um, Insider's View of Mormonism, and I told my dad, I said, Dad, I, I, you know, before we talk, I want you to read this book. Ugh, it's totally the wrong thing to do. I, I, um, I was angry. Did he do I was it? hurt. He did. Oh. He did. He did. He read it. Um, you know, we had a conversation that was about, I think it was probably about four hours long, but we didn't discuss the book at all. I, I, it kind of, it was, um, you know, kind of the way that he summarized it, and I hope, I hope I'm not um, getting this wrong, but basically he said, you know, I looked at the references in the back and everybody had either left the church, you know, all the, all the people people were quoting. Not, not really trust. Basically that's what it was, you know, I said, Dad, you know, these were people's diaries. I mean, they're deathbed confessions. I mean, it's, you know, things that in any court of law would yeah, totally yeah. hold up. Yeah. But, um, you know, the problem was is that that's really not, that didn't show the joy that I had in me. All it showed was, the hurt and the, yeah. you know, I, I, I cared so much about my dad and he always had been this real example to me oh, of, yeah. you know, and I wanted him to have that. I was like, I found this, you know, pearl <laughs> of great price and I wanted my dad to see it. I wanted to say, dad, look at this, yeah. you know, and I wanted him to be able to, 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 I wanted to have that same drawing that I felt from God and, and it didn't happen, and, and um, you know, there was some pain and whatever. Reading the Bible, did, he, did you kind of challenge him maybe to read the Bible? That's kind of where you got your You know, I, I, I have, and I know my dad's read it before, and my mom, you know, she had said that she went back, and I had talked about some of the verses, and he she said it. she had read it, and she didn't, you know, it kind of I know, strengthened but, her testimony. But see, it wouldn't have affected us either no, before, no. until the I really, filter honestly, comes off. You know, I really do believe in John 6 where it talks about, you know, Jesus is talking about these very difficult, you know, eat my blood, you know, drink my blood and eat my flesh. And like, it's so hard to understand. And where he says, you know, everyone's gonna hear, but you know, those who will learn, God will draw them and help them understand those things. And I think there has to be a willingness yeah. to actually be taught. I didn't, I, I believed all my life that I, I, I couldn't be taught. Well, David, we could go know, on forever time. and you are just <laughs> excellent. And we'll have to maybe do this again sometime. <laughs> That'd be or. great. That'd some kind of an interview, but um, yeah, I just relate so much to your story. Thanks so much for coming and sharing. We get to hear Sarah and see what you yes. what you left out. <laughs> so we'll see you next time Thanks. on Ex Mormon Files. Mm -hmm.